Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jay Prakash Bhati, working as assistant professor in the Department of CSE here at IMT College of Engineering, Greater Noida. Today, I'm going to deliver a lecture on the topic, the basics of computer networks. Let us discuss, let us go through the, the content which we are going to discuss during this lecture like definition of computer networks, what are its objectives and applications, the architecture used in computer networks like P2P network architecture or client-server architecture, the network structure, the communication model, various types of communications and various types modes of transmissions used in computer networks for data transmission, the network classifications on the basis of the scale or the size, OSI reference model and its services, the switching processes, and the various types of switching methods. And the last is physical layer transmission media. Now, <clears throat> so let's begin with the lecture. Here we can define the computer networks as a collection of interconnecting nodes, which are connected with the goal of communication and resource share, so that they can share the available resources through the network. Usually uh, the connection between these computing nodes made up of physical wires or cables. But sometimes this type, these connections may be wireless, which uses the radio waves, microwaves, or infrared waves for establishing, establishing the connection between various nodes on a computer network. Now let us discuss the various goals or objectives of the computer networks. Why? we need computer networks. The, the primary objective of computer networks is information or resource sharing. With the help of computer networks, we can share the information or the resources from one node to another node. It provides high reliability of data transmission. It also reduces the cost of data transmission from one node to another node. The computer networks also improve the accessibility and the performance of a system. They also provide the communication medium on various nodes widely spread it. Now come to the uh, net computer network applications. Computer networks are used in almost all the domains like business applications, home applications, mobile user applications, or social issues applications. We will discuss these one by one. Like business applications like e-commerce, business, ticket reservation, bill payments, or banking services, we all use the computer networks in our daily life. In home applications, <clears throat> we are used to computer networks to access the uh, remote information like online learning or downloading the, a movie or a song. Person to person communication like chat messengers, interactive entertainments like game, online games or movies on an OTT uh, platform or e-commerce shop. For mobile users, the wireless networks provides uh, the computer networks available in a building to uh, share the resources or the information among the various nodes or like store inventory with a handheld computer. In social issues, 
we can use computer networks like for discussions about politics, religions, and society with the help of news groups or bulletin boards. Now come, we are going to discuss the various types of architectures used in computer networks. Mainly there are two architectures of computer networks. The first one is peer-to-peer -peer or also known as P2P architecture. Another one is the client-server architecture. Let's discuss what is a P2P architecture. A P2P network is a very simple network of computing nodes. Here, each computer acts as a node for resource sharing or information sharing within the network. Every node acts as a server and thus there is no central server in such type of network. This also allows the sharing of huge amount of data, data among all the nodes uh, connected to the computer network. The tasks are equally divided among all the nodes and each node connected in the network shares an equal workload. Here, no any node can monopolize the <clears throat> computer network. All nodes are equal in rights. They can act as a server or a client board. Another uh, architecture is client-server architecture, which is a uh, very important architecture of computer networks. Here, a network architecture in which each computer or process on a network is either a client or a server. The servers are basically used to control the access to the resources available on the network. A client send a request to the server for a resource or services. <clears throat> the server responds to the client request and make the information or the resource available to use. There are three components of client-server architecture. First one is a client, the another one is server, and the third one is communication networks, which provides a connectivity between the client and a server node. So we can define the clients as an application that runs on the computers. The client uh, applications relies on the servers for file sharing, for devices, and for the processing powers. Like example, email client, an application that makes you to send and receive the emails through a computer network. Servers are nothing but computers or the processes that manage the all available resources on a network. There may be uh, various types of servers like disks, disk drives or file servers, the print servers, which are printers and the network traffic or network servers. Like the example is database server, where a computer system that processes the database queries done by various clients. So the gist is the servers manages all the available resources on a computer network. Now come to discuss the communication network, <clears throat> which connects the client and servers for communication. Now here we are going to discuss the architecture of computer networks and a structure of computer networks. The network topologies are the basic building blocks of computer networks. We can define a topology as a physical layout of nodes on a network or a blueprint of computer networks, which shows how various nodes are interconnected to each other. It defines the way in which computers and other devices are connect, interconnected. A topology describes the physical layout of links and nodes as well as the path that is used for data transmission between various nodes. There are four basic types of network topologies like bus topology, ring topology, star topology, or mass topology. Let's discuss 
these various topologies one by one. The first one is bus topology. It is the simplest one of all the topologies. Here, all the nodes are connected to a single communication line that is known as a backbone of the computer network or also a trunk. This communication line carries <clears throat> the data transmission in both directions. Here, the systems are connected to this uh, backbone with the help of T connectors or tabs. And at the terminating ends, the terminators are used to uh, stop signals after reaching end of the wire and absorb them to prevent the signal bounce back. So the advantage of the uh, bus topology is it is very easy to understand and install and that is used for the small networks. Relatively, it is very less expensive to implement <clears> thus <throat> less amount of cabling is required. And it, it is easy to expand uh, a bus topology by simply using a BNC barrel connector which joins two cables. But it also has uh, some disadvantages also. Well, if a heavy network traffic slow down the transmission rate or the cable break or loose BNC connector will cause reflection of signals and it may bring down the whole network. Second topology is the ring topology. The second type of topology is ring topology in which all the nodes are connected in a closed loop. Here, the data transmission is um, occurs in one direction. Either it may be clockwise or anti-clockwise. The rings are used in uh, networks where high performance of data transmission is required or large bandwidth is required. The ring network, ring is an, called an active network as the each node in the ring retransmits the uh, data what it receives from the previous node. That means each node in a ring receives the transmission signal from the previous node and forward it to the next node after amplification of the signals. That's why they, uh, it is also known as an active network. Here are the advantages of the uh, ring topology. Uh, if we compare it uh, with uh, bus topology, it is easier to manage, easier to locate a defective node or a cable problem. And no one computer can uh, control the network. But it has some uh, disadvantages also, like failure of one node will uh, bring down the whole network and adding or removing the nodes disturbs the network activity. Right? If we are going to scaling up or scaling down the uh, computer network in a ring topology, that is a tedious or complex task which will dis uh, disturb the network configuration. The third one is a star topology. Uh, it is very uh, simple topology where every node on the network is connected to each other through a central hub. It uh, resembles like the spokes of a bicycle wheel. <clears throat> It has so many advantages that uh, it is used for uh, uh, modern networks at a very large scale. It has low startup cost and very easy to manage. The star topology also offers the opportunities for expansion in an easy manner. It is the most popular topology used with wide variety of equipment available. However, it has some disadvantages also as the hub is a single point of uh, 
communication in case the hub is failed entire network will collapse and there is no communication between any two nodes another disadvantage is it requires more cables as compared to the bus or train topology the fourth one is the mass topology where each and every node is connected to other node through a dedicated link or point to point link the term dedicated means the link carries traffic only between the two connecting nodes <clears throat> and here is a formula to uh, calculate the number of links used to connect n number of devices the formula is n into n minus 1 divided by 2 which gives the physical number of links required to connect n number of devices in a mass topology if we discuss the uh, advantages of mass topology the first one is it uh, dedicated links eliminate the traffic problem means each and every node has a separate link for communication. It also provides the security and privacy, more security and privacy as compared to other topologies. And fault diagnosis is very easy and simple in mass topology. And it is the robust one among all the topologies. However, these uh, advantages also turn into disadvantages like installation and reconfiguration is very difficult and it is very expensive as it requires large cabling to uh, provide dedicated links between all nodes on the entire network. Now, <clears throat> These four uh, topologies are also used in a hybrid manner in the modern day computer networks. Now we will discuss the communication model. What is the communication model followed in computer networks? The communication model has five major components like source, that can be any node which generate data to be transmitted. Another one is transmitter that receives the uh, uh, data from the source and converts the data into transmittable signals. Next one is transmission system which carries the data uh, signals from the transmitter to the receiver. The receiver converts these received signals into data and the destination is uh, the component which receives the incoming data. Here we can see that two types of transmission is taking place. If we see that uh, between the source and transmitter and the receiver and destination, the transmission is digital in nature. But if we observe that between transmitter and transmission system up to the receiver, our transmission is analog in nature. So this, uh, this diagram is uh, expressing how the communication model works in a computer network. Now, the next point is the types of various types of communications available on a computer network. <clears throat> there are three types of communications, unicast, multicast, and broadcast. The in unicast communication, one-to-one -one, uh, data communication is going. Here, the communication where information is sent from one point to another point. Just one sender is there and one receiver is there. For example, the chat, ma chat messengers or like WhatsApp messenger we are uh, using these days. Example of unicast communication. 
Next one is multicast. That means one to many, where <clears throat> the information is sent from one source to multiple nodes. Here, there is one sender and a set of receivers is available. The best example is the paid OTT platforms uh, such as Netflix and Amazon Prime are best example for the multicast communication models. Third one is the broadcast, which describes the communication from one to all. Means there is one sender and it transmits for the data or information to all the other connected receivers. The best example is radio and TV broadcast. Now come to the modes of transmission. There are three modes of transmission used in computer networks, the simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. In simplex modes of transmission, data transmission is unidirectional, means the sender is always a sender and receiver is always a receiver, remains receiver. For example, the TV or radio transmissions, the broadcasting stations are <clears throat> always act as the source or sender and the radio or TV receiving sets are always act as the receivers. Second one is the half duplex where data transmission is possible in uh, both directions but only one direction at a time. For example, walkie-talkie. We can transmit the data in both the directions, but not simultaneously. In full duplex, the data transmission is bidirectional and simultaneously. Means we can transmit the data in both directions simultaneously. Now come to the... Uh, network classification based on the scale or the size of the network. Here we can categorize the computer networks in uh, five categories uh, on the basis of scale or size. The first one is personal area network or PAN that is the smallest uh, computer networks. Next one is the local area network, also known as LAN. Next is the metropolitan area network, known as MAN. Next is wide area network, known as WAN. But the last one is internet. Now discuss the personal area network, which uh, is formed by using a limited devices like <clears throat> your system connected to the printer or two or more mobile phones are connected to your laptop with the help of Bluetooth. So uh, the size of the uh, pan is very less. It ranges less than two meters. Next is local area network that contains printers, servers, and computers, which are very close to each other and they are connected through the bus, a ring, or a mass topology. It is easy to de design and troubleshoot and it may be contained in one office or a building. The third category is metropolitan area network. It is uh, a larger networks where two or more small lands are connected to form a map. It enables the regional resource sharing and it's, it can be extended over an entire city. Next is wide area network where two or more lands or mans are interconnected to form a van. It is spread over a large geographical area, typically uses uh, public or leased lines for interconnectivity of the various nodes, like phone lines or satellite links. Next one is the internet. When two or more networks are connected, they are 
called internetwork or internet the internet is also a collection of all the network that is spread over the entire globe means all the interconnected networks which are spread over the entire globe now come to the osi reference model that is uh, that provides the basis of communication model in computer networks it is known as open system interconnection reference model or osi reference model because it it is designed to deal with open systems and the system which are open for communication with other systems the systems may be heterogeneous and <clears throat> it provides a common uh, platform to communicate with these systems each layer it has seven layers like physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer session layer presentation layer and application layer the lowest layer is physical layer and the user always interacts with the topmost layer known as application layer these layers have uh, various functionalities like uh, physical layer is responsible for creating maintaining and break down the physical connections logical physical connections it also defines the voltage and data rates used for data transmission it is responsible for conversion of data bits into electrical signals and also decides which mode of uh, transmission is used for data transmission or data communication like simplex half duplex or full duplex next layer is the data link layer whose primary uh, objective is to ensure the error free transmission from one node to another other functions are synchronization error detection and correction <clears throat> framing it also uh, controls the uh, data traffic control mechanism and uh, helps it ensures how to keep a faster transmitter from drowning a slower receiver in data <clears throat> the third layer is network layer whose uh, basic functions are routing of the signal through the network it divides the outgoing messages into packets and it also acts as network controller for routing data next layer is the transport layer which is responsible for uh, data transmission from one node to another it decides whether the transmission will be parallel or through the single path it is uh, responsible for multiplexing splitting or segmentation of the data during data transmission this layer also ensures the transmission of data from one node to another node for end to end data transmission it breaks up the data into smaller units for efficient handling by the network layer next layer is the session layer which allows the users on different machines to establish a session between them for data communication it manages and synchronizes the conversation between two systems like it controls login and log off user identifications and of session management the, the sessions offer various services like dialog dialog control or token management and data streams are marked and resynchronized properly so that the ends of the message are not cut prematurely so these functions are served by the session layer <clears throat> <clears throat> Less, next one is the presentation layer which concern with the syntax and semantics of the information shared through the network it works as the translator it makes the system with different data representations to communicate with each other by exchanging the data structures and defining them in an abstract way the last one is the application layer to which through which user interacts with the computer network it retransfers the files of information 
It is also responsible for distributing the results to the user and the functionalities like login or password checking are also performed in this application layer. It also contains number of protocols that are used by the, <clears throat> that are needed by the user for network communication. Now, due to the scarcity of the time, I'm uh, going to wind up my lecture here. So I hope uh, you get, uh, you get, uh, good knowledge of basics of computer networks. Thank you.